Hello, everyone. Please call us. We would love to take your calls. We have several guests here could, who could answer your questions on the topic of DUIs. What are some things people can do? Is it have a lift, have a friend on call? What are some other Super Bowl tips that you guys might offer to keep people safe? All right. Oh, good. Go ahead. Please. <laughs> I was going to say, um, of course, th th planning ahead is number one. You want to be very proactive. Communicate <clears throat> with your friends and family or whoever it is that you're going out with. Designate a uh, designated driver, sober driver, or just make sure that you have a plan, whether it's going to be a taxi service or a ride-sharing app like Lyft or Uber. Uh, sometimes they do promotions during holiday seasons and during festivities like Super Bowl. Um, also, there are some local law enforcement agencies that have sober ride programs. So you, uh, if it's worst case scenario, call law enforcement, call uh, the Davidson County Sheriff's Office or Metro and see if there's a, a possibility for you to get picked up because you never want to be in a position where you get behind the wheel. Um, even if you think you've only had a couple drinks and maybe you feel uh, buzzed but good enough to drive, it's still not a good idea to get behind the wheel uh, because keep in mind that with alcohol impairment, you're impairing more than just your ability to drive, you're incoherent. You're not going to be as safe as you would be if you were sober. You, it's more likely you're going to be distracted and messing with your phone. Uh, more likely you're not going to wear your seatbelt and could possibly crash and get ejected from the vehicle. Um, it's more likely that you're going to have other people in the vehicle with you and uh, potentially get into a dangerous situation there being distracted. So, you know, there are cognitive things to think about, visual and impairments, um, you know, audio impairments. So really the bottom line, make sure that you have some kind of plan A and a plan B because um, sometimes even your designated driver may end up drinking and you may need to spend the night at that Super Bowl party or you may just need to call somebody to pick you up, but never get behind the wheel. We were talking in the break about limits from a medical perspective. So for some people, could they be drunk on a drink if they had maybe never had alcohol before? Well, and what, what we were speaking about earlier um, with giving adolescents or, or kids alcohol, they're going to respond to alcohol completely differently than an adult's going to respond to alcohol. And, you know, it's, it's, it, gets, it gets so complicated with your, um, just your genetics, your body size, have you eaten, have you not eaten. And so, uh, you know, certainly you want to know your limits, certainly space out your drinks, you know, some good tips, you know, for every, you know, one drink, make sure you, you drink water. Not that, that doesn't only uh, uh, slow you down, it keeps you hydrated. Hopefully it'll space out the drinks a little bit further. So all those things, eating, don't drink on an empty stomach, um, but, but really just deciding, you know, I'm going to have two drinks tonight and that's all I'm going to have uh, so that you don't end up uh, clouding your thinking enough to make mistakes, get behind the wheel or do something like that. We have Dustin on line one. What's your question? Dustin, are you there? Hello. Hey. I'm here. Yes. Hey, how are you? Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I got a question for law enforcement, um, if possible. Um, what are we doing about underage drinking? And is there going to be more strict rules for Tennessee for that to get more stricter for them not to drive behind the wheel? There's been a lot of accidents with 18 year olds, 19 year olds, and 20 year olds. Well, with the, <clears throat> excuse me, with the laws getting stricter, that would, that would have to come from the legislature. That have to come from the lawmakers themselves, but but as far as enforcement, yes, that is something that uh, that the Tennessee Highway Patrol we we take very serious, and we do uh, enforce underage drinking as 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 strictly as we can. We also take it a step further, try to find out where they're getting the alcohol from. Are they getting it through a fake ID? Are they getting it from a convenience store? Uh, we work with numerous other agencies to make sure that 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 information is being shared. Uh, Underage drinking is a problem. It is. It's. It's always been a problem. It's kind of like a, uh, you know, a, a, a passage for adolescents to, to move into adulthood. Drinking does not make you an, an adult. That's that is a, what teenagers need to understand. And if you are a teenager and you are with someone out on a date and your date is drinking at a party, do not get in the car with that person. Uh, do all that you can to stop that person from driving, but do not get in the car with that with that person. Uh, notify an adult immediately, if at all possible. And, and again, adults do not need to be given children alcohol, and that happens very frequently, quite often, more than, than many of us probably uh, are aware.
but uh, we are aware of it and we are looking into it as in, in case by case basis. But if we do detect a drunk driver, regardless of age, we will take the appropriate enforcement. I think too, as parents, um, we really have to take uh, a hard look uh, at ourselves and talking to our children. Um, I, you know, I, I've told both my daughters, you know, there's, I can't say there wouldn't be any consequences um, to drinking if they were out doing something, but I would want them to know 100% that if they made a mistake and they did that, don't compound that mistake by getting behind the wheel or getting in the car with someone else who's been drinking. Mm -hmm. Call one of us, Correct. we'll come pick you up, we'll, we'll take you home, you know, take your friends home, whatever, whatever the case may be. Um, not, to, not to minimize what's happened and, and what they've done, but in the moment, the most important thing is to get them home safe. Get them home, get them home. So many times you're scared probably as a kid of getting in trouble or yep. being mm -hmm. the one to get everyone in trouble, but Maybe it's just about having a mm -hmm. conversation. Mm -hmm. Well, so, also to piggyback on uh, what Dr. Nagy was saying, as a parent, you also have to lead by example. And I think it's very hard to have a teenager uh, display a certain behavior if you're not displaying that mm -hmm. behavior yourself. So, uh, of course, have that conversation of what uh, that young child or teenager should do or shouldn't mm -hmm. do and what your rules are going to be and how you're going to kind of regulate your household. and. Uh, but also make sure that your driving habits are what they should be, whether it be uh, distracted driving or impaired driving or even um, you know, child passenger safety. Make sure that your children are properly installed. Make sure that you're not texting and then, you know, your children are watching you texting while you're driving. Uh, as a parent, you set the example. So mm -hmm. make sure that you're doing your best uh, to be responsible behind the wheel and they'll repeat those actions. I think we still have one person on line one. Do you have another question at this time before we go to break? No, I just want to thank you. Thank you all for being on here and thank you to the officer as well, if that's possible. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's awesome. You guys have a good night. You, you too. Thank, thank you. you so much. Again, if you guys have questions, please call in 615-737 plus. He talked a little bit, or the other guy did, about road rage. We're seeing more and more press releases come into our newsroom where this was a road rage incident turned mm -hmm. shooting, or this person was driven off the road during a road rage incident. Are you guys seeing more at the hospital? Uh, I can't say that I've necessarily seen a spike in, uh, I mean, I, we certainly do see it, um, I, I don't, but I can't say that we've seen a spike in road rage uh, injuries specifically. What about you from a state perspective? Is, are people angrier than they used to be or is? <laughs> we, we have seen more calls coming in for uh, uh, reports of aggressive driving or road, road rage situations. Um, and, you know, what the calls are or the factor uh, for the road rage, it's numerous. Um, people in general, we are uh, we want everything now. We want to go from point A to point B now. We don't want to miss that that message on the, the cell phone. That's while we're texting and driving, driving distracted. So, t you know, work is busy, home life is busy, after hours, uh, family extracurricular activities are busy, uh, and all of that stress tends to bottle up and somebody at the wrong place at the wrong time may inadvertently cut you off and, and uh, by not giving a turn signal and that might be your your trigger switch for the day and where you've had all that you can ha that you are going to stand and you take out your frustrations on the other person but w we really need to understand is we don't know who the other person is we don't know what situations they've been through what what life problems that they may be having we don't know if they have just stolen that vehicle if they are if they're an armed robber if they have committed a, a violent crime somewhere. So to be inside your vehicle tends to give people a false sense of security and um, it empowers them to be able to act out towards other people and that's a false sense to have. And if you are a victim of road rage, we really stress notify law enforcement. That's what we're trained to do. We're, we're trained to come out and investigate the situation. Do not take the law into your own hands. That's what we're here for. That's what we wanna do is come out and protect you and protect the situation. Um, and keep it from escalating even worse. And DUI or is also any <coughs> motorized vehicle. I know a lot of the scooters, those are new, but if you're at your country club and want to take the golf cart out, is that something that you could get in trouble for? George Jones did. He, he got arrested riding on a lawnmower a long time ago. So yes, <laughs> yes, if you're on a motorized <laughs> vehicle and you're drinking and, and you're on the highway, yes, you can be, you can be arrested for DUI. Well, and I think people don't realize that, you know, 
the human body's not really made to take a, a force, um, you know, even falling out of a go-kart at 20 miles mm -hmm. an hour. Um, it, I took care of a, a, a couple of teenagers who w weren't drinking but were, were driving a, a go-kart and hit a tree, and, uh, and one of them died. Um, mm -hmm. they, they had a terrible head injury, mm -hmm. and really, they weren't going that fast. So. So just because we think it's, oh, it's just a scooter or it's just a golf cart, that doesn't mean it's not a, a, a dangerous machine that you have to respect. And, and like the doctor was talking about, these vehicles are not equipped with airbags. They're not equipped <clears throat> with the shock absorbing bumpers and crumple zones of like a car or, or passenger vehicle will have. Uh, they don't have the seat belts that, that vehicles have. So it's not advisable to start trying to mix a vehicle that's not meant to be on the roadway with vehicles that are traveling on the roadway that are meant to be there. Good point. Mm -hmm. Do you have any input on that at all? Um, well, one thing that I would say when it comes to drinking is, and with road rage and aggressive behavior and violence, is when you have an event like Super Bowl weekend and you have something where a lot of festivities are happening at bars and uh, downtown areas and you've got large groups of people, that's when you really need to mind, be mindful of how much you've had to drink, how much your your friends and uh, have had to drink, because you've got big crowds of people, you've got a lot of activity going on, and uh, alcohol can escalate situations to get out of control, especially uh, pedestrian situations too. You don't want to end up uh, in the road getting hit by a car. You don't want to end up getting stranded or lost, and um, your friends not know where you are. So, uh, really, during this time period this weekend, be mindful of how much you're drinking and uh, how your your friends are doing because you don't know if your friends could be on medications and mixing that with alcohol and then they end up being more drunk than you really know them to be uh, so really you just have to like we said plan ahead and just be be mindful of the your status and your friends we have Daya on line one um, we can take your question now if you can hear us Daya are you there hello yeah I'm here do you have a question uh, yes, um, my name is Kittrell, and a few years, hello? Hello. Um, yes, I was driving some friends home one night, and they were, they were drunk, but I was a designated driver, and I, uh, and I tried to tell the trooper that I was a designated driver, and he told me to shut up, and uh, he was going to cite me for DUI, the disorderly conduct. And I was just trying to explain to him that I was just trying to, you know, tell him, but he didn't want to listen. So what did I do in that case? He, he, he's going to cite me, and I'm the, drive, the designated driver. Well, in that situation, um, I can only imagine um, it could have been very chaotic if you have uh, one or two or three people inside the vehicle who have been drinking and they get stopped by law enforcement. Um, obviously the odor of alcohol is present in the vehicle so it may take the law enforcement officer time to figure out who has and who has not been drinking. And in a situation where you could have, and I'm only imagining how how you have one sober person with a car load full of other people who are under the influence, how chaotic that could be. I've, I've seen it. Uh, and you do have to calm the situation down. Um, I'm sure at no point in time does the trooper mean to be rude, but if you're trying to explain a situation, you have other people yelling and screaming, and, uh, you know, their situation or, or maybe obscenities or, or uh, just being loud in general and out of control, just de-escalate. Calm down, let the trooper or, or law enforcement officer, whomever, do their investigation, talk you off to the side, and then they'll get a full picture of the, of the situation. But if you still continue to... Um, I guess interrupt the investigation. You can be cited for disorderly conduct. Now he's not being cited for DUI, but or he could be cited for interfering with the officer's duties if he's interfering with the actual investigation. But in that situation, um, it sounds like the, the right uh, the cooler heads prevailed. Um, no one was cited for for anything that were not supposed to be cited for. The uh, the gentleman was uh, doing a great service indeed as a designated driver and wants to. Sound like once the air cleared, he was allowed to go about his way. Sure. Well, thank you guys so much for answering that. We'll have to go do a commercial break, but we'll be right back. 